There we are. That's better. Yeah. Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, this time we're... we're uh, it's barley wine. Barley wine, yeah. That's it. 24 pints. 24 pints. And we're basically siphoning it out because it's, it's ready to be bottled up. Yeah, there'll be a little, a little bit of sediment, sediment probably. We can't see whether there is or not, but there's probably some sediment at the bottom. So um, if, if we sort of jugged it out of there into bottles, what would happen is it would get all churned, churned up. up. So we're getting the clear liquid off first, and then we shall use yeah. jugs to fill the bottles on. Yeah, because we've found that that's quicker. Yeah, it's... There is, we've got the machine in that, but it, the time we've got it all working and everything, we've probably got the thing done, haven't we? So well, that's right, with two of us doing yeah. it, so you know, yeah. we can do it yeah. with jugs really fast. So, we've got the automatic siphon here. We're going to stick this into the fermenter. I've measured the distance that... There we are. Okay, so we're going to pump it now, folks. Okay, it's going. And that's it. That's all there is to it, to the siphoning, anyway. Well, it's not quite all. I'm doing an important job here. I, I know you are. The you are. Moment. Nigel's hiding down here. It's, there's no funny business, you know. It's purely the barley wine. <laughs> So what we'll be doing, we'll be siphoning this all out and then we're going to be um, transferring it into uh, bottles. We're going to be adding half a teaspoonful of sugar to each bottle. That, that, what's the word? Prime? Is that prime? Uh, priming, yeah. Priming, yeah. I see, I'm getting there, folks. I've got a terrible memory, but I'm, I'm slowly getting there. <laughs> um, should be, I should have it all tackled in a couple of years. The barley wine, it's, it's basically the same as the beer recipe, but uh, the amount of water is less. So we're making 24 pints. If we were making this into a beer, we'd be making 40. Yeah. With, with it using extra water. Yeah. It kind of sound quickly, doesn't it? Yeah, it's quite good, this. They should have invented this, this sort of siphon pump years ago. It would have saved saved so much trouble for people. Yeah. I suppose though, back in those days, um, they didn't have internet and that, so. No, so people were not sharing their ideas no, to the same right. extent, were they? No. Presumably, it, this is obviously people have probably got, had a similar invention, but it wasn't known. Yeah, yeah that's right. It's interesting to see all the, the comments on some of these, um, uh, what do you call it, Facebook groups for, for brewing and for winemaking. Yeah. Lots of different ideas coming up in those. Oh, while we're talking about it, folks, we have got, um, we have set our own little uh, home brewing group up. So uh, if you want to know the address, um, just drop a comment and I will post it to you. It's on Facebook. About three quarters of a gallon left there now. Yeah. Well, we need to tip it. Yeah, you will need to do so. Now you need to tip it this way uh, so that the, the end of the siphon doesn't. Uh, like that. Get unprimed. That's it. Yeah, that's it. And then keep an eye on it, and as soon as you can see it all churning up and going cloudy, put it back to the level, and it'll stop. Is it still looking all right? I think so. I, I, but I think we can stop it. It doesn't matter about a little bit, does it? Oh, oh no, you want a little little bit, because otherwise the, the bottles won't prime. Oh, well. You don't want it totally clear. How about that? Good, that's, that looks excellent. Alright, so if we put that... There's only that little... Oh yeah, that's alright, yeah, yeah, good. Right, so we'd better put a lid on that just in case anything drops in there. Drops in, yeah. Then we want to get the siphon washed and out the way. Yeah. 
and then we can start the bottling. Put some, if you put some water in there, yeah, no, you can no, just no. pump it through. I've just, I've just uh, emptied it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where you can see this, folks, but I've got a jug here with some clean water in. But they can't quite see that, Julie. Can you move back? That's it. There we are. And so all I'm doing is pumping water through the pipe just to swell out the barley wine and then put it in there. There we are. All right. If you can dispose of that, and, I'll do, and then I'll wash that uh, five-gallon container. There's nothing in there, is there? No, just, just water. Good. Okay, take this out. Well, this is that In here that's fairly persistent so it wants coming off. Good job then thanks. Okay. Just taking the tide mark off. It's it's surprising how sticky that is where it's you know where the liquid has yeah. gone up to. two jugs and a load of bottles. Just leave it out there, Nigel. Right. Right, right. well we've got one jug here. Right, I guess we we'll probably need to put the camera off now and we'll okay. get the bottles all ready. And we'll, we'll get organised and, and we'll, we'll be back, we'll folks. Hello, folks. Well, we're starting to get ourselves organised and uh, We've got all the bottles cleaned out, we've got the caps lined up. Jugs, Nigel, something important. Oh, oh yes, now if you're not using a siphon to, to fill the, the bottles, but if you're using jugs, you've got to be careful because if you're using jugs, these are going to be dipped into the, the, beer, uh, the beer or the barley wine or whatever. And so they've got to be sterilised, including, particularly including, the base. The base has got to be spotlessly cleaned because that's going to dip into the liquid. And also, once you've done all this, if you're going to put them down on the surface, folks, you've got to make sure that that surface has mm. been sterilised as well. Yeah. This surface is all being cleaned thoroughly. Yeah, that's um, right. Okay, so uh, the first thing we're going to do is uh, we've got a, a funnel. It's absolutely dry, which is important. And we're going to put uh, a teaspoonful of half a teaspoon. half a teaspoonful of sugar into each of the bottles for priming. So remember, keep the funnel really dry, otherwise it'll block up. Okay. So we've actually poured some into a mug here to yeah. make life easier. Yeah, so if, we... if you try and spoon it straight out of the bag, it goes everywhere. So you've got a half a teaspoon. Yeah. And that's it. See how easy that was, folks? Yeah. If it was wet, it would, it would be terrible. Uh... And we must avoid a domino effect of bottles falling over, so one of us is holding this while the other one puts the sugar in. You 
can tell we're concentrating because we're not talking. <laughs> Right, we so just tell us a bit about this priming business, because uh, there's going to be some people who are watching and they haven't got a clue what we're, if they haven't watched our previous uh, videos, they're not going to understand, are they, what, what well, we're doing? Um, when you drink beer or barley wine, it needs to have a bit of sparkle or a bit of head on it. It needs to be slightly fizzy. And there are different ways of doing this, but the easiest way is to add a small amount of sugar to each bottle before you put the beer in because the beer is, uh, or the barley wine, it's still got some yeast in it and what the yeast will do, it will convert the sugar into alcohol and carbon dioxide and it's the CO2 we're interested in and that will give it the fizz. Right, okay. As long as the cap fits and doesn't leak. If it doesn't leak, then it, uh, if it does leak, you'll and, find it'll pressurise. And you know that when it's done, because the actual bottles go rock hard, don't they? Oh yeah, you can feel it. You can feel they, it. These at the moment are quite soft. They, they give yeah. if you squeeze them. But when they've primed, and you try and squeeze you them, they won't be able to. No. Okay. Well, well we're going to crack on doing the rest of these bottles, and we'll be back in a few yeah, minutes. When, yeah, when we start filling, yeah. filling them up. Okay. okay folks, we're going to basically both fill up our jugs. I've got the big one, yeah, I've just got the small one. Yeah, I've got this, this for topping up. Yeah, we're going to stick this in now. Yeah, we've put a bit of um, um, a bit of wood on there so we've got a good flat surface for the bottles. Okay. Should have had the uh, tray, shouldn't I? Oh, we yeah. oh, should, not we, yeah. Right, so you've got that. Yeah. This is fizzier, isn't it, the other one? We're going to have to perhaps do it like a, a line of Guinness bottle like they do in German pubs. <laughs> I think maybe we... Maybe we uh... Maybe we added the sugar afterwards last time. No, we didn't. We definitely added it to start with. This is going to be more difficult. It is, isn't it? Yeah. There's a lot more fizz in this. Yeah, let's do four. And then I might be able to go along them and top them up afterwards. Okay, now let's start at the other end again. Right folks, well you can see what we're basically doing, I don't think we need to film all this. Pro we? Probably not, but you can see the technique's going to be different, because we, yeah. can't, we can't fill the bottles up because they're full of bubbles. Yeah. So we're going to have to fill a line off them, half full. And then and go back on ourselves. Yeah, and gradually fill them up. Oh, so it's not as quick as... No, it's not going to be as quick as the beer, I don't think. No. Yeah, I think we're going to have to f have quite a long line, I reckon. Yeah. Okay, folks, I okay, think we're going to. That's the method, and uh, we're going to crack on. And uh, I think I don't think there'll be any more filming from this one. Um, but obviously, we are going to have at some point a evening of tasting of all the different uh, wines and beers and God knows whatever, whatever everything we um, make. To be honest, uh, okay. See ya. Hello again, we're back. Um, we've had to get a system together with these bottles because there's a lot more fizz to them than what there was with the lager one. Um, so what we're actually doing is we're filling the back bottles up um, and then they're bring, being moved to the front here and then I'm putting the caps on um, and then we're just we're just going to be swapping, aren't we, Nigel? Yeah, maybe, but maybe you can explain a bit better. Yeah, we've, we've got to make sure that uh, the the ones at the front are the ones that have had the beer in for longest, so, um, because those are the ones that we're going to top up. Yeah, because uh, that and, basically and means the fizz has gone yeah, down. Yeah, but we don't want Julie to be reaching across no, one row to knocking, get the others and yeah. knocking everything over. So, as we add bottles, we add them to the back row, and then move them forward. 
into any spaces. This one. That's, uh, that's nearly ready, isn't it? That one. Let's just a little, a little bit more. Just a little bit more, yeah. Okay, that's it. There we go. Now, these are all PET bottles, what we're using. And, um, yeah, polyethylene terthalate. Yeah, and they've actually got a, um, the cap's got a, a it, it locks. So when you, when you, it's, it seals kind of thing. And, and basically when you, the seal will break afterwards. So it's, a, it's, it's basically letting people know that it is a, um, a complete bottle. It's not been used before. Yeah. The cups are user, reusable, aren't they, for home brewing? Yeah, really? yeah, I believe so. Yeah. And I, th I, th I think they're the same size, so the standard uh, screw thread anyway, it's the same as lemonade bottle yeah. tops. Right. It's certainly taking a lot more time than the lager, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Well, could you pass another a couple of bottles over, yeah. please? I'll start those off at the back. By the time I fill the ones at the back, the, the ones at the front ought to be able to top up, top and then up. can move them out of the way. So we've actually um, we've got eight done up to, up to now. Yeah, it's probably not that much slower than beer, but we've just got to work out how to do it yeah. because it's behaving differently. And the farming folks takes about two days to complete. We've had a taste of this and it tastes good. Oh it's good, yeah. It's got a bit of fizz on it, as yeah. you can as you can guess from the appearance of the bottles. Just a bit more on this one, Nigel, and then I can Right. Okay. I think probably we'll need to wipe them all with a damp cloth as well because there's a little bit of overflow with all the fizz. Yes. Yes, most certainly. Yeah. Don't want sticky hands. Yeah, do you want to move that back one to the, the front and put, put another one in the space? You can tell Nigel is a teacher, can't you? <laughs> well, you've got to tell people what to do, otherwise they just, know, they just drift, don't do, they? Yeah. Probably okay, you think? Yes. Okay. Right, I think you've basically you've got the idea. We don't want, don't want to bore you, it's going to take quite some time, this is. <laughs> See ya.